Ah, another pretty picture of the sailboat sojourn, just to relax us between sections. Natural remedies for migraines. Magnesium is the chief one, very, very important. Studies have shown that migraineurs have low brain, excuse me, have low brain magnesium during migraine attacks. In a double-blind placebo-controlled trial, this gold-plated trial, magnesium supplementation reduced migraine frequency 42%. Now, right there, if you're getting several migraines a month and it cuts it down that much, that's, that's really good. Now, it's true that excessive migraine, excessive magnesium is laxative. Uh, you can limit the amount of magnesium that you take. Uh, most people find three or 400 milligrams per day not to be laxative, uh, but people vary. And also sprays and lotions are available. There are foot soaks of magnesium in many different ways that you can get magnesium into your body. Uh, they make oils and lotions with magnesium in them for treatment. Also, they have a spray of magnesium that people are using frequently to during migraines to help reduce the severity of the migraine. Not a lot of studies on this, but uh, I have a couple here, one from the journal Nutrients in 2022 on magnesium and uh, another one from Cephalalgia. This is a migraine devoted to headache pain. Study looked at a combination of three things. Magnesium, 5-HTP is hydroxytryptophan. So the essential amino acid tryptophan can be converted to 5-HT, 5-HTP, and then it, it can be converted further. Uh, but in this case, they just use magnesium, 5-HTP, and feverfew. Combining these therapies, cut in half or more, uh, the bar on the left is the number of days per month went down from nine to three. How does that sound? Pretty good. Nine migraines a month. It's just really going to make your life miserable. Three is still too many, but that's less than one a week. And perhaps you can cope with your job and your family. The number of attacks per month um, reduced from six to two and a half. Oh, excuse me, the first bar is the number of days per month, not the number of attacks per month. So it went down from nine days per month from, to three days per month. And this is with this combination. The number of attacks per month went down from six to a little over two, better than half. The pain intensity was also cut more than in half. And the number of analgesics, pain-killing medications that people needed went from over nine to about two. So it cut them down to a quarter. It's one way you know people are feeling less pain if they're reaching less often for the pain relief bottle. So this combination is known as Aura Stop, and it's a patented uh, remedy that is available. Magnesium reduces excitability in the brain. This is well established. It blocks the excitatory neurotransmitter glutamate, and it does this by blocking a calcium channel in a receptor for glutamate. The receptor is N-methyl diaspartate. Magnesium influences the serotonin receptors, nitric oxide synthesis, and inflammation. Magnesium is really powerful. And you, I think it's an essential nutrient. Okay, I wrote a college textbook for McGraw-Hill called Vitamins and Minerals Demystified. And in it, I outlined the essential nutrients, both vitamins and minerals. And there's no doubt magnesium is an essential macro mineral that we need every day. And there's no doubt from analyzing diets that many diets are low in magnesium, perhaps just those diets where people get more mag migraines. Here's some fun magnesium sources, spinach, 157 milligrams, and we need about a thousand a day. That's the recommended amount for adults. Uh, sunflower seeds, 117 milligrams and peanut butter, 102 milligrams. These are some fun ways to get magnesium. I also supplement magnesium as a precaution, so I never get low. I also analyze diets with my uh, Diet Doctor software program, which I designed and use all the time to analyze diets. When I analyze diets like the Atkins diet or the paleo diet, I find that magnesium is very low in these diets. Uh, magnesium is a central atom in chlorophyll. 
And when people eat more green vegetables, they tend to get more magnesium. But as you can see, it's also found in nuts and seeds and uh, mostly in other plant foods. There's some other ways to deal with migraine remedies. Uh, acupuncture may be helpful. If you haven't tried it and you're not afraid of needles, you could consider acupuncture for migraines. Some people find it helpful and other people don't. Massage can be helpful for migraines, keeping those stress levels down. Self-massage, just rubbing your own neck and relaxing the muscles going up into your head can be very, very helpful if you're starting to feel overstressed and that can trigger a migraine. Aerobic exercise, of course, is helpful and necessary for good health. Biofeedback is where you use a machine. Uh, one of them is thermal, and you can put a little clip on your fingertip, and it will judge your temperature of your finger. When you're more relaxed, there's more blood flow to your finger, so it gets warmer. And so you can learn to relax yourself by watching the temperature of your finger. Uh, also, progressive relaxation can be good. If you need more relaxation. Progressive relaxation is where you tighten, say, your foot and then relax it and breathe deeply. And then you tighten your ankle and relax it and breathe deeply. One of my books available on my website is Healing Medicine. It's available in ebook or paper format. And it's called Healing Medicine. It has a chapter on stress relief. And I describe progressive relaxation in there. Uh, I hope enough to introduce you to the subject. It's available on drsteveblake.com. I do want to mention yoga because many people find yoga very relaxing. Watch out for postures where you're inverted, you know, like standing on your head, because there's possibility that could trigger a migraine. So you may want to do only standing and sitting exercises when you do yoga, in, unless those aren't a bother for you. Here's some quick migraine remedies. When you're in pain, it's really nice to have something that can help right away. You can massage temples with a drop of essential oil. Now, peppermint can be a little bit hot and uh, but very stimulating, and it can draw it's, the blood from inside out to the skin. You may see some redness of your skin, and, and it, it may be too much for you, but it may feel kind of cool, hot, and tingly. Uh, also, lavender oil is very gentle on the skin and can help. It's anti-inflammatory, lavender oil. And blue chamomile oil contains azulin, a blue anti-inflammatory substance. It's very anti-inflammatory. Blue chamomile oil is wonderful. The smell alone will make you feel better. And when you rub it on your temples, it can relax you and the smell relaxes you and it reduces inflammation all at once. I know this is gonna sound almost silly, but paste on the forehead, lemon peel mash. Okay, that's uh, kind of out there. Uh, I got this from a comprehensive review uh, by some Indian researchers in the Indo-American Journal of Pharmaceutical Research. And I've also experimented with these and talked to people where these things actually help. For instance, cabbage leaf mash, you wouldn't think that cabbage leaves have much power, but I have seen scientific studies where they did cabbage leaf wraps on osteoarthritis knees and found that they reduce pain and inflammation quite a bit. So even though it sounds kind of silly, a cabbage leaf mash, where you chop it up and make a mash, you can use it raw or cooked, can have an effect. Evening primrose oil massaged into the forehead might have an effect. Evening primrose oil contains gamma linolenic acid. Gamma linolenic acid can be transformed into eicosanoids in the body that may relieve inflammation and pain. Also, you can take a bowl of steaming water and put coriander seeds or lavender or rosemary essential oils and inhale the steam. All of these work very quickly so that you can get something that helps you perhaps while you're waiting for your medications to kick in. Kind of fun ideas that are a little outside the box. There are two heating balms that can be put on the forehead. Don't get them near your eyes because they'll definitely sting. Uh, tiger balm, the white tiger balm seems to be the best for headaches. Some people like the red tiger balm. Both of them give pain relief in seconds. And the cayenne heat ointment made by Christopher uh, is available online usually only, but 
I have found that for years to be the most effective heating balm for the forehead. Again, don't get it near your eyes or other sensitive areas, or you'll you realize the power of medical plants. Some people use emergency as a drink, and that can help with pain and discomfort and make you feel better. Uh, it seems to really help with headaches. Now, we sometimes use the emergency brand packets but because they're very convenient, you can carry them with you and just put them in water and let them fizz for a minute. But I find them a bit over flavored. So you can make it yourself with a quarter teaspoon of ascorbic acid crystals and an eighth teaspoon of baking soda in a glass of water, let them fizz for a while. And I find it kind of a re refreshing uh, drink that eases pain and it seems to make me feel a lot better. Uh, certainly, Vitamin C is an essential nutrient and very good for you in many ways. So we're recommending something here that is only gonna have positive side effects. This is the ascorbated form of vitamin C. Ascorbated means it's no longer acidic. Ascorbic acid is pH three like lemon juice and can be too acidic for your stomach. So large amounts can cause diarrhea, but the ascorbated form has not been found to bother people's stomach, which is why I recommend this form. What about energy production and migraines? They've looked at people with migraines and they've seen that they have a reduction in mitochondrial activity. The little energy factories in our cells are suppressed between headaches. So there are some supplements that increase energy production, including riboflavin, which is vitamin B2 and coenzyme Q10. This is an image of my book, Vitamins and Minerals Demystified by McGraw-Hill. And if you're curious about vitamins and minerals, how they work, the essential micro and macro nutrients, uh, please uh, read through it. It even has quizzes, midterms, and a final exam for <laughs> to check if you absorbed everything properly. I really wish this could be incorporated into a medical school curriculum and nursing school curriculum. And I have tried, but I have not found any success in doing so. Mm -hmm.